Are you concerned about the future of interest rates and home prices? Well, if so, this is the perfect place for you because we're going to analyze the most recent inflation data and how it may impact those home buying decisions. Hi, I'm Joe Harris with Morgan Financial, and this is your Keeping Your Business on Track. I'm here with Nick Morgan. How are you doing, Nick? I'm doing great, Joe. How are you? I'm good. We have a lot to talk about. We do. <laughs> this we do. In, this inflation's been going on for way too long. Yeah, you know, we were going in the right direction at the end of the last year, it seemed like. Mm-hmm. And then this year we get we get hit with some um, unexpected data and reports. Yeah, exactly. And so that's exactly what we're talking about today. And I had a few questions for you. Okay. If you wanted to hop right in. Let's do it. Awesome. So that latest inflation report that came out last Wednesday the 10th, I believe, um, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, but that, um, that report came out. And what does that latest report mean for the economy? And well, what did that report discuss? Like, what did it break down? Well, one of the things is we keep getting mixed data. One report's mm-hmm. in the favor of inflation coming down, and then the next report might be showing inflation comes up by different standards or metrics. Right. And so the the CPI report is core price index. It's mm-hmm. it's basically a basket of goods. And how much does that basket of goods cost? Does it cost more than it used to or less than or same than? Mm-hmm. And that's one of the ways they judge inflation. There's there's a couple means. Yeah. And so that that data came out better than expected in favor of inflation. Right. Yeah. So it shows that inflation is still going along at a pretty decent clip by mm-hmm. by the way they're measuring the CPI. Yeah. And I believe they expected it to either stay the same or come down slightly, but it rose a little bit. It did. It went, it went up a little bit. We could use all the numbers, but they're, I mean, it's just need to know right now, it's just that the numbers have gone up. I got you. And so inflation is a, came in a little hotter than expected. Mm-hmm. Now, one of the big things is that when things come in better or worse than or higher than or lower than expected, mm-hmm. it's going to change the market. Yeah. Okay. What markets am I talking about? Typically bond markets, but lately the stock market's been affected, bond market, crypto market. Mm -hmm. I mean, now we got to add crypto in these days because it's a major market now. And and so these things are, are, it affects all these things. Mm -hmm. So one of the biggest impacts inflation has is on interest rates. Yeah. And we saw that rates ticked up significantly. I say significantly, maybe a a quarter uh, of a percent to the interest rate, Mm -hmm. give or take, depending on your loan specifics. Mm -hmm. But the rates definitely ticked up. From this, from these la- the last report of the CPI. Mm. Okay, awesome. So it affects rates that way. Now, what's the relationship between inflation and housing prices? Is that is there what's going on there? Well, there's there's a lot of things going on there. So mm. home inflation typically during inflationary times, home prices also rise mm-hmm. because the, the you know your home is a good is a is a good basically. Yeah. Just like all the other goods out there, it raises typically raises in price. Mm. Now the battle right now is that there is increase in interest rates, mm. right, which make it less affordable for many people. Mm. Yet you also have a potential raising of prices, and we haven't seen a real retreat in price across major markets in, in the in the in the country. There's been some markets have retreated in price, yeah, but some markets are stabilized or are still going up, mm-hmm. not as fast. Clearly, not as fast as they rose in the past mm-hmm. and, you know, in 20 and 21 and yeah. even part of 22, mm-hmm. but, but they've stabilized in another, a lot of areas and we're seeing minor growth versus major growth in prices. I gotcha. I gotcha. Okay. Then now what predictions can we make? Um, if any, for short term changes to both the housing prices that we just talked about and also mortgage rates? Well, you know, this is tough because I think a lot of people we're seeing a lot of sellers just stand their ground on their price. Yeah. And we see buyers that, you know, want to get a deal, mm-hmm. yet th- there's not as many sellers out there looking to, mm-hmm. because, you know, the seller is going to say, look, if I have to sell my house, I've still got to turn around in a lot of cases, buy a different house. Mm-hmm. And so if I'm going to pay, you know, top dollar for the house I'm buying, I want to get top dollar for my house that mm-hmm. I'm selling. So I personally haven't seen a, a serious retreat in prices yet. Mm-hmm. You know, if, if inflation, lingers a lot longer, you know, we might continue to see rising of prices, but if the interest rates stay high, you know, we could see a retreat in price, but I, I just, I haven't seen the data support that yet. Yeah. Yeah. No, that was exactly my next question. If inflation does sustain these levels and doesn't start creeping down, like people are hoping, what will that mean um, for, again, rates and home affordability? You know, it, it, I mean, obviously with a higher interest rate, it's a lower affordability, Yeah. right? That's just, you know, the higher the interest rate, the higher the payment's going to be and the lower the affordability. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you'd have to think over time that would have to affect, you know, um, beginning of last year, 
you know, 2023, all the talking heads were saying that the interest rates would come down by the end of the year. Yeah. Well, they were wrong. Yeah. Right. And a lot of the factors, the economy is very resilient. There's a lot, you know, there's a lot at play, but there's, there's a lot of, um, right now, I believe, you know, if you look at consumer debt, mm-hmm. that people have continued to keep the same lifestyle they had mm-hmm. two, three years ago, but they're financing it with debt. Yeah. And that can be seen by the record levels of debt, consumer debt that individuals have uh, out there right now. Mm-hmm. And, and that can only be sustained for so long. Okay. And so once, you know, one of the most recent reports, we saw retail sell, sales, all right? Mm-hmm. And retail sp- sales came in way hotter than expected. And because of that, it hit rates because, if you know, the rates look at, um, the interest rates want to look at inflation. Mm-hmm. And what are some of the causes of inflation? Well, there's, the CPI is a, a piece of data that shows really what, what things are appreciating at as far as in, what inflation is rising mm-hmm. at. PPI is producer price index, mm. okay? And that's the cost to produce the goods and service that go into the CPI, a lot, mm. of, a lot of the data in the CPI. And we're starting to see that level out. And obviously, that has to level out or go down before the cost of goods and service right. goes down. And not to add more fuel to the fire, but you look at labor. Mm. Our, our unemployment rates are at you know record lows still which is great that people are out there working, but it's tough to hire in this environment. And if you, and there's not a lot of people in the workforce, mm-hmm. then you have to pay them more to come work for you. And if you have to pay more, well, businesses aren't in business to lose money. Right. They have to charge more, mm-hmm. right? And that's a spiral. We call it the wage price spiral. Mm-hmm. If I have to ch- uh, pay you more to come work for me, then I have to charge more to stay in business. Right. And then you just see these, you know, the wages and prices just go up and up and up. Right. And until that labor pool, I'm, you know, I hate to say it, but until that unemployment goes back up mm-hmm. or more people enter the workforce, because remember, we lost about 10 million workers in COVID. Mm-hmm. That whether because because of government subsidies or retirement or other things, they decide not to come back to the workforce. Now, some of those have come back. I don't know the numbers on that. Yeah. A, a fair amount, but mm-hmm. but there's still less in the workforce than there needs to be to have that unemployment at a rate where we can stop this wage price spiral. I got you. Awesome. Great information. And so with that inflation report coming back, um, a little bit unexpected for what people generally expected, what is the Fed now predicted to do moving forward? Because previously it was like, hey, you know, maybe in June-ish, right. you know, maybe rate, cut, rate cuts are coming. But now is that still the outlook or, or what are we thinking? Yeah, we, you know, the, it was very heavily favored for a rate cut in June about a month ago. Right. Right now that heavily favored has gone down significantly. I think there was right. the last time I checked, there's only about a, the, the consensus is there's only about a 19% chance of a rate cut in June. That might even come down further. They're mm. pushing potential, you know, the, the thought of potential rate cuts out further. Yeah. You know, the new mantra is higher for longer. Yeah. Which I don't love as a as a, you know, someone that sells money. For sure. <laughs> but at the same time, um, it's if it's what's needed to keep inflation in check, then we gotta do what we gotta do. But the problem isn't necessarily the demand side. And that's mm. what the Fed affects is the demand side of, you know, if you raise the interest rates to buy cars and equity loans and credit cards, you're going to increase the cost to buy those things. And it's going to decrease someone's want to pay more yep. for the same item, right? Yep. So th- that's the hope is that they destroy or deter demand. Mm-hmm. Well, the problem, like I said, has a lot to do with the supply side. And we've talked about this before. Mm-hmm. You know, the cost of oil, mm-hmm. you know, is, is 90 bucks a barrel. Well, oil's in every single good and service made, right? You have to get it to the, you got to deliver it, you got to manufacture it. Um, and so it's pretty much, I shouldn't say all, almost all goods and services have oil in it and somewhat. Yep. And if oil costs this much, you know, the cost of that good and service. So mm-hmm. until oil comes down, you can't expect the cost of these things also to come down right. as much. Right. So, you know, until we get that piece, until that gets under control, mm-hmm. you know, and obviously with wars in the, in the Middle East and, and all these things, that doesn't decrease the cost of oil, right? Yeah. It's going to increase it. Yeah. So that's going to be a problem moving forward. So long story short, yes, I believe that that the talking heads, the the so-called experts on the on interest rates, are predicting it to be farther out. Okay. You know that 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 rate decreased farther out. Yeah. Or maybe this is a new norm. I don't know. Who knows? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And in that case, are there any historical precedents? You might not be knowledgeable on that um, for how the mortgage industry might handle this inflation period, similar to one in the past. Like, 
Is there a precedent for this or this? Well, we've had much, much higher rates in the past. I mean, really, we're talking about, you know, rates in the sixes and sevens right now. I mean, depending on your specific situation, loan type, and even what day you watch this on, the rates are, you know, I I hate to say it because we're used to such cheap money. Mm -hmm. And it's unfair to say a six or 7% rate is high. Mm -hmm. But in a frame of reference for the last 15 years or so since 2008, rates have averaged, you know, under 7%. Yeah. Under six percent for most of those years, mm-hmm. under five for some, mm-hmm. and then threes and twos in some, right? So we have this uh, mindset that money should be unbelievably inexpensive, when in reality, historically speaking, that's just not the case. Yeah, you know, you look at early '80s, late '70s, inflation was through the roof. Interest rates were in the teens, mid to high teens in some cases. Yeah, and you know, you compare that to now, we're a fraction of that. Mm-hmm. And people are still looking at the rates as unbelievably high. Mm-hmm. But again, their frame of reference for the, for for the sure. last, for many people, the last 15 years was, was put them into their childhood. Mm-hmm. And so they don't know any different. Mm-hmm. But the reality is 6 and 7% rates, yeah, they're, they're, it's, not, it's not historically speaking that high. But if you're used to 3 and 4% rates, it's, it's, you're spending a lot more for the same good yeah. or for the same item like, like a home or mm-hmm. a car. Mm-hmm. Totally. Totally. Awesome. And so the last couple questions I have for you is uh, now with this data coming out, what would you advise or um, what would you say to people in the home buying, looking to um, buy a home or refinance um, in this current economic environment? Look, if you need to buy a house, you need to buy a car, you need to buy it, Mm -hmm. right? Right now, you know, I do believe over time, as historically has been shown, real estate tends to appreciate, yeah. right? People need a place to live. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not like we're selling horse and buggy whips since the turn of the 19th or is that 20th century or <laughs> and it's about to become obsolete, you know? Yeah. Uh, the the home people will need a place to live. Yeah. Right? In our in our current construct, that's where people live, mm-hmm. homes, apartments, condos, whatever. Mm-hmm. And so these things as the population isn't decreasing, it's going up. Mm-hmm. So there's more people after the same amount of homes, and they can't build homes fast enough as we've shown. Mm-hmm. And so I believe the homes will continue to appreciate over time. You know, if your time frame's five months, maybe not. Yeah. If your time frame's five to 10 years, you have a very high likelihood yeah. of appreciation versus depreciation over that time frame. Mm-hmm. We haven't seen an area of depreciation of 10 years. Yeah. It just hasn't happened. Even with as much um, value as we lost in 2008, nine and 10, yeah you know, the homes are still above those values again now. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. if if you need a place to live and you and buying a home doesn't always make sense, but in most op, most op, most areas it does, yeah. okay? And so if you need to buy a car, same thing. And interest rates on cars aren't as, they don't have a, as high of an impact on cars mm-hmm. as they do on homes. Mm-hmm. You know, you have a shorter period of time. A lot of the manufacturers are still subsidizing the, the car interest rates. Mm. So you can find some good deals out there. And homes, if you're good with the payment, just don't don't ever buy something in hopes that you can refinance it. Yeah. Right? I wouldn't do that. Yeah. But if you can down the road, if you can afford the current payment, you might be able to improve your position down the road. Mm-hmm. I say might because no one knows for sure that rates will go down again. And I don't see them going down to two and three percent again. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I appreciate all the information. Cool. Yeah. If, if you got some value out of this, please hit the like button, hit subscribe and listen to future podcasts. And with that, we'll see you next time. Mm-hmm.